So casual. Even the way we raise money. Huh? We went to Ghana. And you know Ghana is very costly when it comes to real estate. To rent a hall in Ghana, in Ghana is some money. The Nigerian equivalent, the Naira equivalent of what it took to rent the hall we used for four days, for one day, was 1.3 million. So we're paying 1.3 million every day for the hall we use for four days. How much is that? Help me. What? 5.2 million. So we paid 5.2 million for that auditorium. The auditorium has 4,000 capacity. It was 1.3 per night. The guys that um, came up, came with their cameras, we rented cameras. It was 12,000 CDs. That's uh, how much? Add two zeros. What do you have? 1.2 million. So add it to 5.2, 6 point something. Okay, we, we, we made T-shirts. They didn't tell me the cost of the T-shirts. We made all kinds of stuff. So by the time we came to Ghana, our team was owing $9,000. And you know, our pastor in Ghana is a man of faith. He believes everything is possible. I say, oh, God, come, oh, God, come. come. <laughs> we're in trouble, oh, God, we're in trouble. He said, the Lord... We we're in trouble. I had to go to God and say, God, we're owing money. Will you allow me to take offering? He said, you may take offering if you will make a contribution. You know it's possible for somebody to be raising money and he's not giving. I said, yes, I have $2,000. It's okay. Before you take the offering, pay your own first. Then you can announce it. Don't say, you come and give $2,000. You, no, just announce it and go and sleep. It's my own job to convince the people to give. You know that's a risk if what you are looking for is 9,000 US dollars. Not in US, in Ghana. So I told them, we didn't come here to raise money. I'm very sorry. We have a problem. This is my own 2,000 US dollars. We need 9,000. And that was all. We didn't talk about that. Yet. Do you know how much we got? We got 9,500. So we were able to pay, and just for God to show us that he's more than 9,000, he added. <laughs> Don't get used to raising money. I had to go to him to ask him first. Lest, the, because maybe if I had come and then we start raising money without asking him, it will work. People will still give money. But what you are doing there is the iniquity of the sanctuary. You are operating in his sanctuary without his express power. You are doing something strange. What you are doing is strange. Heaven will be looking at it. What is what's happening here? That's what happens when we allow the old creation to ferment. It will enter into ministry and it will begin to do something. That God will need to catch our attention by killing somebody. Oh, the moment the fear of God is gone, you are gone. You become familiar with God, you start touching people's breasts. That's how a pastor, a married woman came for cancer, and he slapped her on the butt and said, There is something you are giving your husband that you are not giving me. I am a Korea Siakonde. You have forgotten that in the sanctuary the laws are different. And so we have all kinds of crazy things happening. And the reason why God will judge the church in Nigeria is because the iniquity of the sanctuary has, has been taking place for long. People are used to it.
I've seen situations where a pastor sent people to a congregation where he was coming to preach in two weeks' time. They mingled with the guys, getting information. This one, his name is Boniface. He works in NMPC. His number is 080, this, this, this. And the minister came and was cramming number. 08446. That's, that's, what, that's supposed to be word of knowledge. Then he came and said, Boniface, Boniface, Boniface. I'm hearing Boniface. Yeah. Whenever you hear that a minister died on the pulpit, don't, don't, con, don't send condolence message quickly. If not, you'll be a partaker of the iniquity. You and your wife thought you are going to preach. Just go back and say, be afraid of God. Be afraid. He said, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. This is just the number one item of the iniquity of the sanctuary. That's just one out of four. Many men will yet die preaching the gospel in Nigeria. Because the era of judgment has begun. God was, is out to purge his church so that he can have a remnant that will bring witness to him in the earth. And so spiritual authority is a dangerous occupation. That was why David, even though he had the opportunity to kill Saul, he refused. Because he knows that it is God that has the exclusive right to judge an anointing. Do you understand that? If I see a man living in sin, I will say, sin is wrong. But ultimately, it is God that will judge that man. I will run away from him. If I had any form of association with, with him, I haven't told him that there is a matter and he ignores it. I mean, I will escape. So that, because in the day that God comes to judge, if you are around, he will strike you too. I want to pray for the church in Nigeria. So much has happened. So much has happened. If I tell you how many people, how many ladies have come to me for counseling who, who have been brutalized by ministers of the gospel, you will never know them because the Lord has transformed them. And even my wife, I will not tell her. Because that's the burden of our calling. There are secrets you will keep to the grave. You will know that something is wrong with ministry in our time. 80 priests that were valiant could not resist the man's flesh. Can we ask that God, let me never get to that point where you will need to come and strike me. May my heart be ever tender. What's that our song again? Yes, that's the song. Before we pray, Jesus suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot say. You need to fear him. On Calvary tree, he suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot say. He lost me. I cannot say why. He lost me. I cannot say why. Uh -huh. On Calvary Tree, He 
suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot fail. If you are here in this auditorium, you were given one responsibility or the other to do in the kingdom. And because of the honor that is attached to the hallowed office of the ministry, the hallowed place of the anointed, you had so much influence. And part of what you used the influence to do was to defile a sister. If you are here and you want to be free, is, this is the Lord, though. This is the Lord. This is not me. Just in case you want to be free, I want to invite you to come and repent here. You have from count of one to the count of eight. At least I'm doing this to obey God. And at the count of eight, don't bother. God is coming into his sanctuary. And a lot of casualties will find expression because the fear of the Lord is absent. He loves me. I cannot say why. I, on Calvary trees, he suffered for me. He lost me. I cannot.